This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. So in this part we are going to study about the law of inertia. Okay. So Galileo studied motion of objects on an inclined plane. For example, in the first figure you can see see the objects which are moving down. So the objects which are moving down an inclined plane accelerate. Which means when an object is moving down from an inclined plane, it will accelerate. Okay, it will increase its acceleration. Okay, when it will move up, you can see here. So, when it will move up means in the reverse direction. Okay, the object will retard. What happens when it moves in a horizontal direction? Yes. Motion on a horizontal plane is an intermediate situation. Okay, it is it's really an intermediate situation, and the Galileo concluded that an object moving on a frictionless horizontal plane must neither have acceleration nor retardation. So if this object is moving in a frictionless uh, horizontal plane then it should have no acceleration and no retardation okay that is it should move with constant velocity so in this particular case the object moves with constant velocity okay another experiment by Galileo leading to the same conclusion involves a double inclined plane so another uh, he, the Galileo he conducted another experiment uh, which also gave the same result as uh, given by this particular experiment. In that he took a double inclined plane. A ball is released from rest on one of the plane and it rolls down and climbs up the other. So you can see here. So in the first figure, so the ball, see the ball is, it is released from rest. Okay, it is released from rest on one of the planes and it rolls down and again it climbs up. You can see here. So it climbs up on the other. If the planes are smooth, the final height of the ball is nearly the same as the initial height so if the plane is smooth the final height of this ball is same as that of the initial height in the ideal situation when friction is absent the final height of the ball is same as its initial height so if there is no friction at that time the final height it must be equal to the initial height of the ball Okay, if the slope of the second plane is decreased, okay, as you can see here, if the slope of this uh, second plane is decreased, and if, if you, you know, if continue the same experiment, if the same experiment is repeated, then the ball will still reach the same height, but in doing so, it will travel a longer distance. So again, in this particular case also, it will reach the same height as that of the initial height of the ball. But in doing so, it will travel a little more distance compared to this first case. 
So in the limiting case, when the slope of the second plane is zero, so you can see here when the slope of the second plane When the slope of the second plane is zero, then the ball travels an infinite distance. So, in this particular case, the ball will travel an infinite distance. So, in other words, its motion never ceases. Okay. In practice, the ball does come to a stop after moving a finite distance on the horizontal plane because of the friction, the opposing friction, which can never be totally eliminated. However, if there is no friction, the ball would continue to move at a constant velocity on the horizontal plane. So, Galileo thus arrived at a new insight on the motion that had eluded Aristotle and those who followed him. The state of rest and the state of uniform linear motion are almost, you know, both are equivalent. So, in both the cases, there is no net force acting on the body. If you consider the state of rest as well as state of uniform linear motion. Okay, we can say that the state of rest and Uniform linear motion both are equivalent. Okay, both of these are equivalent. In both the cases, there is no net force acting on the body. So, in these both the cases, there is no net force which is acting on the body. Okay. So, it is incorrect to assume that a net force is needed to keep a body in uniform motion. To maintain a body in uniform motion, we need to apply an external force to encounter the frictional force so that the two forces sum up to zero and net external force will be zero and the body will be in uniform motion. So once again to summarize if the net external force is zero the body at rest continues to remain at rest and the body in motion continues to move with uniform velocity. So if the net external force is zero Then the body, if it is at rest, it continues to be in rest. If it is in a uniform motion, then it continues to be in the uniform motion. So, this property of the body is called as a inertia. Inertia is nothing but resistance to change. This property of the body is called as inertia. So, as I told you, when if the net external force is zero, a body at rest, it continues to remain at rest and a body in motion continues to move with uniform velocity. So, this property of the body is nothing but inertia. So, we can say inertia means resistance to change.
okay inertia is nothing but resistance to change a body does not change its state of rest or uniform motion unless an external force compels it to change that state so if the body is at rest means it continues to be in that state only if the body is in uniform motion means it continues in the same uniform motion unless and until there is no external force acting on it okay we can describe or define inertia in this way okay the body does not change its state of rest or even we can say uniform motion unless an external force compels it to change that force okay so this is nothing but the property of inertia it is just nothing but uh, resistance to change so we already uh, you know saw the different cases how galileo explain or how he studied the motion of objects on an inclined plane and even we consider the slope so what happens if the slope uh, okay is uh, decreased and if the experiment is repeated the slope of the second plane and what happens if we reduce the slope of that second plane and what happens if that becomes horizontal which means uh, when the slope of the second plane is zero zero is nothing but what yes horizontal at that time what happens the ball travels to an infinite distance so all those three cases we studied under the law of inertia so basically Uh, galileo arrived at a new insight on the motion which was uh, eluded aristotle and even those who followed him so in that again in this part we are telling that both the state of rest as well as uniform linear motion are equivalent so this is uh, the property of the body in this particular case or this kind of property of the body which is nothing but resistance to change that is called as inertia so in that inertia the body does not change its state of rest or uniform motion unless and until an external force compels it to change that state so if there is no external force then the body continues to be in the same state so if it is in the rest it continues to be in the rest if it is in the uniform motion state it continues to be in the uniform motion state so in the next part we are going to study newton's law that to 
फर्स्ट लॉ ऑफ मोशन